A pleasant day to everyone. Welcome to our uh, webinar on occupational safety and health in Tibet. And we are about to start our uh, our webinar for today. And to formally open this uh, program, may I invite our Director General, Dr. Amhari Lamichani, to uh, for his uh, welcome a message. Dr. Ram, please. Okay, thank you, Muriel. CPSC team and all distinguished participants from different countries, mostly from CPSC member countries and around the globe. On behalf of Colombo Plan Staff College, I would like to welcome you all in this webinar on occupational health and safety. I think this is very short and sweet welcome remarks because I'll do presentation. That's why I, I, I don't like to talk more here. Anyway, most of the Participants are well familiar with the CPSC system and CPSC training program and different webinar. So once again, we would like to welcome you the, here. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ram. Now may I turn you over to our uh, webinar facilitator, Engineer Abdul Ghani Rajku. Engineer Ghani, please. Thank you, Varel. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ram, for your welcome remarks, a very short remarks. Thank you very much. Dear district and participants, welcome to our CPSC webinar on occupational safety and health in uh, interior sector. We have organized this webinar to build capacity of our TVET professionals on understanding of occupational safety and health standards, especially in TVET sector which includes to understand the what kind of protective equipment do you require when uh, uh, when uh, the the, employ, uh, the skilled person will perform occupation jobs like uh, like the air protective uh, equipment eyes and face respiratory system hands and lungs and there must be some kind of tools and kits and there are a number of things are there like the hazards so we we have organized this we, we have organized this program to, to share you, to, to train you, to build your capacity on these, uh, uh, you know, uh, very demanding and challenging, you know, uh, 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 sectors. Uh, that is the occupational health and safety. And it's it's our requirement in our uh, in for our graduates. So today we have two presentations. Uh, number one, uh, which, will, which will be del delivered by uh, our uh, respected speaker, Engineer Sanyog Batrai. And the second one, Dr. Ramay Lamichani. So, Engineer uh, Batraya will talk about more on the occupational safety and hand. Dr. Ram will discuss more broadly and more perspectively cover uh, all the occupation in the uh, occupational safety and hand. So, uh, may I request uh, Engineer Sanyok to present uh, your first session? Kaneji, no. Kaneji, first, first DG, sir. Okay, first DG, sir. Sorry, sorry for that. So, Dr. Ram, uh, may I request you? Uh, to present your first present, uh, session to participants. Over to you, Dr. Ram. Okay, thank you, Engineer Ghani. As I already mentioned, so once again, welcome to you all. And why, you know, why we choose this topic like occupational health and safety to bring awareness among the Tibet professionals 
due to COVID, because this is the very uh, important topic for the TVET sector, because we have to produce technicians who has to, you know, spend their most of the life with machines, life with the production system, and life in the, if we talk about in the agriculture sector, they have to play with chemicals, chemical fertilizers, and similar to health sector as well, in all Tibet uh, related occupations, occupational health and safety is very important. Most of the country, I think almost all, we have integrated occupational health and safety, re safety related competencies in our curriculum. But some cases, they are not seriously teaching those competencies in these schools. And many places, different hazards has been brought up because of the negligence and because of the incompetencies. There are many issues. That's why Tibet providers or Tibet management system is the key responsible organizations who has to produce competent workforce related to their occupation related competencies with occupational health and safety. This is very important topics. And due to the COVID-19, there are many, you know, psychosocial um, um, uh, problem has emerged because many people has to stay at home and a lot of, you know, uh, tensions, lot of scarcity and many, many things due to that, this, this issues has uh, brought very importantly and CPSC tried our best uh, to present about this. I think all of you are very much aware about occupational health and safety. As engineer Ghani mentions, uh, we have divided into two parts. I'll mostly talk about the management perspective and broader, broader framework. Then engineer Sanyog will uh, explain about the, some of the good example of different countries and how they have integrated in curricula and what are the initiatives within the Tibet institutions they have taken for the occupational health and safety will focus in that way. So once again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your interest to join this webinar. With these words, I'll start my presentation. Okay, so occupational health and safety vital is part of Tibet. This is my topic. So we have to focus on it. I'll start with the quote, this quote from anonymous, not a specified persons. Working safely is like breathing. If you don't, you die. Working safely is like breathing. If we don't breathe, we'll die. Similarly, if we don't, you know, work safely, we will die. Both are the same thing. That's why working safely is the like a breathe of the body. My presentations will cover introduction, existing and potential hazards, why occupational health and safety, OHS, management of OHS, obligation of Tibet institutions, as in Tibet institutions, what we have to do, Conclusion and what TVH Institute should do. What next if we haven't done anything? That is, these are the topics I'll cover. So this is a general, I think all of you are very much aware, occupational health and safety. This OHS is the broad field of study and practice in which like professionals like us, from a variety of discipline work together to protect and enhance the health, safety and well-being of employees, not only employees, as well as visitors of the organizations. For example, we are working in the Tibet sector, in Tibet institutions. Our employees, our staff, our students, some visitors in the institutions, we have to think all of them, not only our employees. Similarly, in industry, they have to think occupational health and safety related environment, protective environment to their staff, their management team, 
as well as outside visitors and customers if they visit. So that's why protect and enhance the health, safety, and well-being of employees and visitors of the organization is called occupational health and safety. So if we go to the ILO definitions, ILO clearly stated that this OHS is identified as the discipline. This is a discipline. Like other discipline, OHS is also a discipline dealing with the prevention of work-related injuries and diseases, as well as the protection and promotion of the health of workers. It aims at the improvement of working condition and environment. Ultimately, why we have to talk about occupational health and safety? Why we have to create safety, safely, safe work environment? Because this is for the improvement of working condition and environment where no one should be injured. And because of the work-related environment, no one should be, you know, get some kind of sickness or diseases. So this is the purpose. That's why ILO has clearly defined this is a discipline deal with the prevention of work-related injuries and diseases. So when we talk about OHS, always we have to think about the legislation. What, 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 what is the legislation, like countries' legislation related to occupational health and safety? And our organizational policy, our organizational framework related to occupational health and safety, and how we are mitigating, and how we are doing risk management things, handling risk. And another important thing is we have to create a safe workplace environment and rights and responsibilities also vary. We should, we should respect the rights and we have to be you know, responsible to fulfill our responsibilities, I think. So if we see the facts about global safety, these are the facts. We cannot ignore it. If the source is global safety statistics. If you see the you know, facts about the occupational, uh, this the related to safety, global safety, there are 340 million occupational accidents and 160 million victims of work-related illness annually. That is one fact. See, 340 million uh, occupational accidents happen in the world. And from that, 160 million will be victims from work-related illness. And annual work-related illness, maybe the sickness, sickness related to eyes, sickness related to ears, sickness related to you know, uh, heart or lungs, many things. And another fact is work-related accident and diseases. The first one is the accidents and the victims. And accident and diseases result in 2.3 million deaths every year. Because of the work related, like uh, when people uh, get you know as, uh, into accident or uh, you know any kind of diseases from in the workplace situations, 2.3 million people are, are dying every year. That is another fact we can't ignore, and that means this result to every single day 6,000 deaths. Annual 2.3 million means single day 6,000 deaths, and hazards. Substances alone are estimated to cause uh, 6.5 million, um, you know, uh, six, uh, 651,000 deaths annually. Hazards itself. Hazards, only hazard, due to the hazard, 651. Like out of 2.3 million deaths, 651,279 deaths annually due to hazard. So these are the, you know, global facts because I want to bring you know, um, um, awareness about the uh, situations. That's why I brought this fact and this is a reality. So we should be careful about it. So there are, we, we discuss about hazards, so existing and potential hazard. What, what are the existing and potential hazard in the workplace? Not having any emergency plan. Most of the organizations, either Tibet institutions or industry or any organizations, the hazards can take place if there is no emergency plan. 
So we must have emergency plan in our institution, like emergency plan related to fire, emergency plan related to earthquake, emergency plan related to you know typhoon, uh, or let's say hurricane emergency uh, plan related to uh, any sort of national natural disaster, flood, or anything. And not clear showing where emergency exits are. And if the institutions are not properly, you know, placing the emergency exits, that's why we have to show the proper exit plan. If something happened, how to go outside, like exit door, exit places, and where to gather. These are the many things we have to do. Because of that, the hazards takes place. And no safety tools are not properly used. In some cases, there is no safety tools in the workplace environment. If there are, but because of the unaware about the you handling the tools and less knowledge about the uh, tools uh, using technology, means they are not properly used. For example, you know, there are uh, like, uh, I, we have seen in some cases, some industries or some TVT institutions, there are face shield and there are, you know, like eyeglass for the welding and even globe, but they do welding without using, uh, you know, face shield and globe. And it will bring, it will give the, uh, so it will bring some accidents and that is a potential hazard. Walkway cluttered with objects. If, in every institution organization, there, there will be a walkway. And if we stock some things on, on the walkway area, then it will, it, because of that objects, some people can, you know, fell down and some accidents can happen. Electric cabling left out for pre people to trip over, you know, like a net electric cable left out. These are the another, another reason of the hazards. And incorrect lifting of heavy objects. And some places, some organizations, they lift heavy objects incorrectly and inappropriate. That is also another region of the hazards. And employee fatigue, like, you know, every employee when they do like a one hour, two hour continuous hard work, definitely as a human body, you know, the tiredness and fatigue will happen. But if people don't care about that and they do work continuously for a longer hour, the accident can happen. Mats that can cause people to sleep. And some cases, some cases, you know, uh, uh, like workers, they get mats and they uh, use, use that mats to sleep. And the, that is the, the so, and that is the um, can cause means in the floor. Like uh, if we uh, put like a what is called that wet floor, and we put mat, and if we put our feet over there, it can slip easily. So people can fall down. So mats that can cause people to slip. That is another reason we have to be careful. That's why always we have to fix. Be careful with wet floor, and careful with mat, something like that. And spills not cleaned up of the floor. So that is another, another reason. Then toxic chemicals on site. So we do not properly store the chemical things. And we put uh, chemicals um, without any um, no, ignorance and proper knowledge. We put everywhere. And sometimes, you know, the children or students or other people who don't know about that chemicals handling and they handle improperly, then accident happen. And poor ventilations, that is the another cause of the hazards, potential hazard, poor ventilation. Ventilation system should be, there should be a very good air circulation system in the workplace. And bullying, another important thing is like, one staff can bullying to another, one senior, senior staff can bullying to another, like a female can bullying to male, male can bullying to female, if there are different groups, the one group can bullying to another. So these are the existing and potential hazards reasons. That's why we have to be careful about it. That is very important. So regarding the six workplace hazards, this is the source from the OSA. The workplace hazards, number one is safety. 
safety related hazards that is uh, spills heights machinery electrical and confined space so these are the region if there is a spills and sometimes you know if uh, people have um, uh, walked you know, in proper heights as uh, something can fall down you know and they can fell down from the uh, like a um, uh, you know from the roof from the construction site people can fall down and sometimes if uh, because of the uh, during the handling of the machinery uh, accident can happen that electrical related safety and confined space the narrow space so these are the workplace hazards related to safety and another is physical like radiation uh, physical hazards like because of the you know the ultraviolet radiation uv and extreme temperature and loud noise so if we work in a loud noise environment or extreme temperature and hot temperature definitely physically it will damage and sickness will come another is ergonomic ergonomic means like lifting work stations and poor postures like a body body related you know so hand the, the physical body related problems will there then on a, another third fourth one is organization related like stress harassment bullying violence flexibility so to maintain occupational health and safety we have to follow the rules and regulation strictly and if we do damn care about that and if we apply flexible approach to you know follow the rules and regulation related to occupational health and safety and if there will be no strict rule the accident can happen similarly stress we have to be we have to create less stress environment there should not be any harassment and bullying and violence to the worker and to the peers to from senior to junior junior to senior everywhere apply this so this is related to organizers fifth one is related to chemical okay like chemical fumes liquids gases pesticides and flammables so these are the chemicals and liquid products so we have to uh, be careful and we should know about how to handle it that's why each and every thing uh, chemical related products we have to fix instruction how to handle that where where that you know chemical we fix it for example fire extinguisher so we have to give clear instruction how to use that similarly gas and any chemicals like uh, pesticides this is very important things and biological another is like biological blood bacteria insects animal waste so we have to carefully uh, dispose this sort of things and we have to if we do not properly uh, handle the biological biological product or we do not follow the proper waste management system the accidents and workplace hazards come that's why in a broad category the workplace related hazard can be or uh, um, you know categorized into six uh, types one is safety second one is physical third one is ergonomic fourth one is organization related fifth one is chemical and sixth one is biological so now i would like to uh, show one video related to occupational health and safety how they are properly managing occupational health and safety in that organizations please watch this video Welcome to BASF Metals Recycling. By now you will have signed in in reception and your site contact notified. This is a secure site, controlled by recorded camera surveillance. Please be aware that when entering the site you may be the subject of a search at any time. This procedure is standard for visitors and contractors as well as BASF employees. Mobile phones, cameras and other recording equipment not belonging to BASF are not allowed in the production area or the rear yard. Phones may be securely left in the lockers provided.
In special circumstances, exceptions to this rule can be granted by your site contact and recorded in the logbook in reception. Now, let's take a look what happens here. If you're planning on entering our production area during your visit to site, certain items of PPE are going to be essential. If you don't have suitable personal protective equipment, then it can be provided for you by your site contact. Visitors are required to wear high visibility clothing at all times whilst in the production area and the yard beyond the barrier. Remember to keep the front fastened up for all around visibility. Take a look at what difference that makes. There's a lot of heavy equipment in the production area, so safety footwear must always be worn. Eye protection like this is essential too. Exposure to very high levels of noise can cause permanent hearing loss or tinnitus. For that reason, we provide you with hearing protection from these dispensers. So, if you find yourself in an environment like this, make sure you're protected by using the right personal protective equipment. It looks like a safe environment, doesn't it? But that's only because we make it safe. Take Paul, he's been with us for 10 years. He's not had an accident and we want to keep it that way. He's got a family to support. And Mark, he's about to become a dad. These guys, like everyone here at BASF Cinderford, understand the importance of planning ahead and preventing hazardous situations from becoming accidents. Take, for example, this window ledge. Anything placed here could fall inwards or outwards, potentially damaging people or property below. And that's why we keep ledges clear. Here at BASF Cinderford, we strive to create safe environments in all that we do. Because the reality is, this site has the potential to be hazardous if not managed correctly. This is a working environment, and as such, there are a number of hazards which can cause us ill health. For example, excessive levels of noise, forklift trucks and other vehicular movements, respirable dust, pressure systems including hydraulic and compressed air, electricity at up to 11,000 volts, moving machinery, and plasma cutting. All of these hazards have the potential to cause either serious or fatal injuries. Please, please take care in all areas of the site. Always enter and leave your work area by the route shown to you by your site contact. Never enter the production area beyond the barrier without permission from the area supervisor. And remember to keep a constant lookout for site traffic. Please make a point to familiarise yourself with the location of fire extinguishers and fire exits. The site alarm is a continuous two-tone siren and sounds like this. If you hear this sound, you should make your work area safe and immediately leave the building by the nearest fire exit. Fire marshals will help you in the event of a building evacuation. Make your way immediately to the assembly point located in the car park where a roll call will be performed. Please be aware, the fire alarm is tested every Monday morning. In the event of an emergency, don't run to the assembly point. Don't re-enter buildings until instructed by the fire marshals. Don't stop for personal belongings. Don't search for colleagues and follow the fire marshals' instructions. In the event of discovering a fire, activate the alarm straight away. For all other emergencies, including accidents and spillages, medical, security or environmental concerns, Call the reception from any internal phone by lifting the handset and dialing 222. Two, two. Good morning security, how may I help you? For your safety, do not touch any substances unnecessarily. While they may look harmless, they may be contaminated. So, eating and drinking is restricted to the canteen. Please obtain permission from your site contact or the area supervisor before using the facilities and be aware Alcohol and non-prescribed drugs are forbidden from the site at all times. Smoking, including electronic cigarettes, is only permitted on site in the designated area. 
If you are a smoker, please ask your site contact to show you its location and the access routes. If you are a contractor, you will need an authorization to work prior to arrival. When you arrive on site, a permit to work will be issued to you and this will identify the scope of work and the control measures required. If there are any safety or environmental incidents, they should be reported via 222 as soon as possible. When your work is complete, it is important to clean up your work area, remove and dispose of all waste responsibly, and remember to confirm completion by signing off the work permits with the issuer, as this is an essential part of our procurement process. At BASF Metals Recycling Limited, we are striving for zero to landfill. Please always use the appropriate bins provided. Never use the drains to dispose of anything. Our site is controlled by visual standards, and these will indicate how every area should be left. The removal and disposal of any waste generated must be discussed and agreed with your site contact. If hazardous materials are involved with your work, these details will be recorded on the work permit, along with the required control measures. At BASF Metals Recycling Limited, we are proud to be an ISO 9001 and ISO 14001 certified facility. We are governed by our health, safety and environmental policies that explain our commitment to the elimination of hazards and accidents and the ongoing protection of our environment. For your safety and the safety of those around you, please ensure you're aware of these site rules and follow them at all times. It is everyone's responsibility to maintain a safe working environment. Economic success and production efficiency do not prevail over health, safety or environmental issues. Nothing is so important it justifies neglecting our HSE responsibilities. At BASF we take our health and safety seriously. It is our number one priority. Nothing is more important than our record for safety. And our concerns for the environment. So please help us to maintain our reputation for safety. Look out for yourself and look out for others. And enjoy your time here at Cinderford. Okay, thank you. Hope you enjoy the video. I think I think that video gave a lot of ideas how we have to apply occupational health and safety related system within the organizations. For example, like a smoking zone, uh, you know, fire is distinguishers, things, how to handle chemical like a uh, for the how to you know uh, apply occupational health and safety related tools and techniques for safety related to noise noise related to dust you know a lot of things we have to care for I think most of the institutions where you are working definitely you have a system but we have to maintain it properly and we have to uh, if not we have to develop a system that's why. Regarding to occupational health and safety management system within TVET institutions, what are the systems we have to develop? What is the TVET Institute occupational health and management health and safety management systems? First, we must have a plan. Plan means every institutions where we are working, we should have OHS plan, occupational health and safety plan. Occupational health and safety plan means emergency plan. If some emergency happens, what we have to do? Like we watch in the video and we saw how they went out and how they assemble in the assigned place, how they use the, you know, um, the sound uh, for the alarming sound uh, of the emergencies and how they uh, follow the, you know, emergency um, uh, stress, uh, stairs, not the regular one. These are the things. So emergency plan is one. Second one is like a maintenance plan. Because of the uh, inappropriate maintenance and old you know, machines and uh, sort of things, the accident might happen. That's why 
we must have a very, very good maintenance plan. Maintenance plan means building maintenance plan, equipment maintenance plan, vehicle maintenance plan, electricity system maintenance plan, water supply system maintenance plan, gas system maintenance plans, everything. Even human resource maintenance plan means how to motivate human resource always. That is very important part. If our human resource demotivate, many other accidents can come. And integrate occupational health and safety competencies in curricula. Another, another thing, like in our plan, we, if we don't have, we have to integrate occupational health and safety competencies in our TVET curricula. And we have to update. Maybe we have uh, updated that uh, occupational health and safety related competencies in, 19, in 2000. Today is 2021. That's why many, uh, you know, uh, professional competencies related to OHS might have changed. So we have to update that curricula. So these are related to plan. And second, based on plan, we have to implement. That is do part. I, I always do the management system in PDCA cycle, you know, plan, do, check, act. So do part is implement OHS plan. We have to implement what we have developed. Then manage emergency, like if some emergency happen, like emergency related to fire, emergency related to injury, some, some injury can take place. And emergency related to sickness, emergency related to power outage, and emergency related to workplace assault. You know, the, the emergency might come due to workplace assault also. That's why manage emergency is the another important things we have to do and manage staff for occupational health and safety. So we have to train staff. We have to recruit occupational health and safety, like safety supervisor, medical persons, medical staff, like each and every organization, not only in Tibet Institute. There must be like a you know, primary healthcare, you know, uh, basic healthcare, primary healthcare things, uh, emergency or we can say nursing unit or health unit, whatever. And we have to recruit such staff and we have to train. Then like train means, for example, like uh, in that video, in every Monday morning, they assemble uh, giving the uh, you know, emergency signal. And that is a practice, you know. So that's why uh, we, have to, we have to do, maybe if not possible every week, maybe we have to do once a month, something like that. Emergency related, you know, assembly things. So manage staff for occupational health and safety and implement training with OHS competencies. So we have to give training to our instructor, training to our staff, then only they can teach to a student properly. And if we do not have occupational health and safety related management system in Tibet institutions, our students or our graduate couldn't learn about OHS. And when they go to the workplace environment, real workplace environment in the industry, they might be unaware about OHS. That's why to give basic knowledge and proper system about OHS, we have to practice in the Tibet institutions. That is two part, okay? And third one is check part. Like related to occupational health and management, occupational health, safety and management system, like check part is always, when we develop plan, when we implement such plan into action, Always we have to do monitoring and supervision. How is happening OHS things within the institution? And evaluation of OHS department. Like every institution, there might be either big or small. There should be a OHS department or unit or branch, whatever. And that evaluation of OHS department also another check part. We have to evaluate how they are performing. Are they performing as per our standard or not? Are they performing as per the set standard and plan that that gives that answer gives by the evaluation system and evaluation of work environment and always we have to evaluate our work environment have we maintain our environment zero uh, zero you know uh, work related hazards and uh, accident uh, environment have we created or not that is that is uh, so always we have to do evaluation of work environment to maintain work environment is one of the key tasks of the Tibet institution and industry. That's why if we teach this system properly, and if 
our students are exposed with this OHS system in the Tibet institutions. When they go to the industry, they can easily adapt it and they can easily understand. The final one is ACT. Like ACT means analyze the feedback and recommendations or suggestion of the evaluations, monitoring, supervision. Every report will give us some feedbacks, suggestions and recommendations. We have to analyze that, how important and are we doing that or not? And which is our priority sectors? Because all recommendation we cannot implement at a time. So we have to prioritize that. Then develop strategies for the improvement. So this is act part, okay? So when we talk about the OHS management system in the Tibet institutions, we have to follow PDCA cycle, plan, implement, check, and manage feedback. And that is act. So we have to develop this system in our institution also. So how to discuss OHS issues? Like sometimes, you know, in, within the organization, there might be some accident or some um, hazards uh, take place and some incidents happens. So how, how to discuss OHS issues within, organi within the organization, that is very important. For that, always report the incidents to the supervisor. We have to develop system. If something happened, whom to report? Who is responsible to report? And we always they have to inform that things to the proper appropriate persons. You know, in our institute, there is there might be OHS department, but if we do not inform incident to OHS department or right persons, and if we inform to wrong persons, the response might not might not be happen. The precaution might not take place. So big accident can happen if we do not communicate properly, if we do not report properly. That's why report the incident to the supervisor or concern authority and colleagues. If we couldn't find the concern authority, always we have to share that things to our colleague, our teammate. That is also very important. Discuss these issues in weekly staff meeting. Like uh, most of the organizations, they do is, uh, weekly staff meeting. If not like, uh, you know, fortnightly or monthly staff meeting or staff meeting means we don't need the whole staff meeting, maybe department like mechanical department meeting, construction department meeting, agriculture department meeting, hospitality department meeting, health department meeting. Within the Tibet institution, there might be six, seven department or institute. So within the big polytechnic institute, they might have five, six different schools. So school related meeting. So discuss the issues in a weekly staff meeting. That is second uh, strategy we have to discuss. Then provide suggestions to the supervisor or safety department to solve the problem. Always we have to give suggestions. If we do only complain, if we do only criticize to the top management, that is not the good way of handling problems. Always we have to give suggestions and you know way different alternative solutions to the supervisor or safety department. Like in some organizations, uh, every year. They, they get like more than five or seven accidents related to chemical handling. Means institute should be serious on that. And they have to find the uh, you know, solutions to solve that problem. So if you are still dissatisfied with the safety issues, give suggestion to top manager. Like our duty is to uh, give suggestion to supervisor or safety department, even though they did not uh, you know, uh, solve the problem, related safety, safety related problem means if still as an staff or employee or member of the organization, we are dissatisfied, then we have to give this suggestion to the top management, means final authority. Then they will take seriously. So how to discuss occupational health and safety issues? These are the ways we can uh, properly handle these issues, okay? So, Another is obligation of Tibet institution on OHS. Like all of us are in Tibet institutions. So what is the obligation of Tibet institution on occupational health and safety? You see, the create a safe work environment. That is number one obligations of Tibet institution. We have to create safe work environment based on the national occupational health and safety norms, rules, laws, and what sort of standard we have to maintain. That is like like in the previous video we watched. 
like uh, there in every organization there must be air board there must be like a you know glass proper appropriate glass gloves helmet whatever like pp set if we are working in kitchen that is another another important things like we, the this uh, uh, the pictures can explain easily about the you know proper dress and pools develop system and procedure to allow work safely so we have to develop system and procedure so every activity like for example welding welding is one activity and one procedure so we have to develop appropriate standard manual for the welding procedures so what first what next like you know you know properly use tools properly use uh, like a safety equipment proper uh, how to how to handle that how to what sort of electrical voltage should be there and like a gas arc sort of thing, lot of things we have to consider so we have to develop system and procedure to allow work safely that is second important obligations of tibet institution third develop communication system to inform any hazards like i already mentioned you we must have a communication matrix communication system if something happen whom to inform where to inform how to inform and who is responsible for that and if we couldn't find that assigned persons to communicate then who is next we we must have that alternative communication person also sometimes you know if we assign responsibility to only one person means because of some incidents or some problems if we couldn't communicate to that persons a big disaster might happen that's why alternate communication so like number 1 if we couldn't communicate to number 1 who is number 2 and who is number 3 like that we must have a system conduct monitoring supervision and evaluation we have to conduct monitoring super and evaluation system and there should be a monitoring supervision and evaluation systems related in all aspects of the tibet institution especially in ohs as well provide appropriate protective equipment tools and clothing that is enough so we have to provide we cannot say as a principal or administrator or director of the tibet institution we cannot say we don't have budget like our department asks proper helmet or ppe set for health department like nursing or you know other health unit and we we cannot say we don't have budget the safety is the first we can hold our salary but we have to buy uh protective equipment and tools and clothing proper clothing that is the obligation train students trainees on appropriate ohs competencies then another important ob obligation of the tibet institution is we have to train our students or trainees with appropriate ohs competencies if we do that many employer or industry will be satisfied to the graduates performance our students performance and they will consider as uh you know good institute and the institutional image can sustain maintaining ohs system also because our students are like ambassador how we, how what they learn they will uh, uh, you know transport that competency to the workplace or with the, with the employer then employer will evaluate our institute based on that so these are the obligation of tibet institutions for on ohs so in concluding remarks like based on my presentations ohs is very important to maintain hr and institutions maintain human resource because we have to maintain hr the negligence work negligence is the main reason of the hazard i already mentioned bullying negligence you know um, uh, harassment many things so and lack of competency is also another uh, cause for the accident that's why maintain hr and institution is important things if hr becomes healthy and safe organization remain healthy and safe maintaining ohs based work environment is image of the organization tibet institution has to perform both maintaining ohs working environment and equipping student with ohs competencies therefore ohs is one of the key performance indicators of the organization there should be ohs management system so based on my presentation these are the concluding remarks so what tibet institution should do what next if not if not okay if you have already uh, implement that's fine you can you can refine it you can 
change it as per the need of the situations we can uh, there is always uh, rooms for the betterment you know that's why develop ohs manual or guideline based on ohs laws within tibet institution we have to develop our occupational health and safety related manual or guideline based on uh, national ohs laws integrate ohs competencies in the curricula we have to integrate ohs competencies in the curricula if not or we have to revise a need of, based on the contextual need establish occupational health safety department or unit we have to establish that and we have to manage it properly train or recruit professional staff so we must have professional staff like safety supervisor like a um, uh, health re health related professional maybe medical doctor nurse or paramedic skills you know whatever and develop occupational health and safety system we have to develop occupational health and safety system which i showed before partnership with industry to manage ohs system like some equipment if we do very good partnership with industry maybe industry can provide us some equipment because industry want to invest in the tibet institutions because when uh, the graduates uh, get certificate and go for work if they are familiar with the tools and equipment which the industry is you know using that will be a very good benefit for the industry that's why partnership with industry to manage ohs ohs system sometimes we can invite uh, expert from industry how they are you know implementing ohs system what are the uh ohs system they are applying so they can take class to our student and partnership with local government or health service providers as an tibet institution we have, we can partnership with local government they can support us they can provide you know resources they can provide budget and similarly we if we are not in positions like we are in the remote area and we don't have adequate staff in that case we can do partnership with health service providers then they can send us like a um, you know uh, health professional to our institutions if needed so partnership is important and manage standard safety signs or symbol within the institute then we have to manage standard safety sign or symbol like danger uh, you know many many uh, sign and symbols are there so we have to properly fix that safety related signs or symbols within our institutions that is very important okay so thank you very much so these are my presentations if you have any questions uh, i am ready to respond and uh, we can share it thank you thank you very much uh, dr ram uh, very informative presentations so dear distinguished participants do you have any question or later gani ji we together we answer the okay. question yes later we can we, we will have a we will have a session yeah. session at the end of the uh, engineer sanyog uh, presentation so once again thank you very much dr ram i hope uh, uh, you enjoy the sessions i really enjoy it uh, because dr ram cover from the three perspective number one is the knowledge part by sharing the important definition of occupational health and safety uh, with the help of the presentation and he he developed the skills with the help of the video presentation so i like it and the third one is the attitude he he shared his ideas his experience with us related to occupational safety and health so, so once again thank you very much dr ram for your nice and informative presentation so we are moving to our second session so uh, over to engineer sanyo thank you gani ji Okay, Kani ji is fine. Okay, uh, distinguished participant, uh, let me uh, once again welcome you all to this uh, webinar organized by Colombo Plan Staff College on occupational safety and health. 
uh, in Tibet. So uh, as a second presentation, and in a first, our DG sir has already I'll, uh, enlightened you with the, what is OSH, how to manage it, uh, and uh, uh, the, the data in the recent, uh, uh, what is happening globally uh, about the OSH and uh, what uh, Tibet Institute should do in the future uh, to avoid accident and the uh, other hazard. So now uh, let me start my presentation. So now a few quotes. Uh, let me start with the two quotes. Uh, a mistake you see, but you, you do nothing to fix become your mistake too. So this is a very, very good message that when you see uh, uh, some mistake, uh, if you see a water spill on the floor, and if you don't inform anybody, maybe you, when you come back, you forget and you may fall uh, in it. So when you see a mistake or some kind of error, you have to inform the concerned authority or a person. And the second one is, people say that accidents are due to human error, which is like a saying false are due to gravity. So it's so easy. When something happens, we say a yeah, human error. Uh, that, uh, that way it won't work. So we have to uh, prevent that uh, error uh, before. So all the time when something happens, accident or any hazard, uh, we blame human, uh, we say easily, it's a human error. So that's not a good practice. So we have to do something uh, to avoid the human error. So it's like saying uh, all faults are due to gravity. So today I'm going to uh, cover in my presentation like what is uh, OSS, uh, very brief, hazard in workplaces, leading causes of fatalities, uh, OSS during pandemic, as you know, this is pandemic time, good practice in Tibet institutions, some country example I'll show you. Then Tibet curricula would always some few example of Tibet curricula with OSS and one OSS course and way forward for Tibet, Tibet institution and the conclusion. So these are the major uh, points I'm going to cover today. So it's simple, uh, what is OSH? Uh, you already know from our DG sir that the, 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 the real definition now is like a, a overall, O mean overall, S mean sustainable happiness. So this should, this should be the uh, aim of our Tibet uh, institution and the education. Uh, if we prevent only one accident uh, of a student, that is not enough. We should uh, plan and think, uh, how to make it sustainable. All the OSH, uh, maintenance and repair, uh, all guideline, regulation, how we can make it sustainable. So it can go for many years and we can about, avoid, uh, prevent uh, many accidents uh, and uh, overcome the hazards. So it should be overall sustainable happiness for Tibet uh, institution. So this is already uh, covered by a uh, so no, just uh, uh, there are hazard uh, six, uh, the digits are already explained to you. Safety hazard, uh, working from hires, unguarded machinery, wiring issue, confined species due to that, uh, this hazard uh, uh, occur. Biological, uh, blood and other body fluid, fungi, mold, bacteria, viruses. Physical hazard, radiation, high sunlight exposure, working in extreme temperature, like in a, a UAE or a Qatar, uh, the, the labor are working in an extreme uh, temperature, which is a very, uh, bad for the health and constant loud noises also uh, in, a, in, a, in a welding trade, uh, you can see very loud no noises in different trades and the uh, ergonomic uh, workstation or chairs are improperly adjusted if they are frequently lift lifting, if they are making repetitive and awkward. So it's about the muscle and the body structure uh, and the, the chemical hazard, you know, the acid, the paints, uh, pesticide, you know, when, when, when you paint your house, uh, what happens, uh, you all run away. Uh, those who have uh, some uh, breathing problem, they could not stay inside the house. The pesticide, as you know, uh, also chemical hazard, blues, cleaning and petroleum products. Uh, so these are the basic uh, um, uh, uh, hazards in the workplaces uh, normally we encounter. So data on leading causes of fat is uh, one of the data Occupational uh, Safety and Health Administration, OSH, USA, has provided data on leading causes of workplace death in the construction uh, industry, which is commonly called the fatal force. So it's, a, it's, a, it's about construction, but that applies to other uh, occupation as well. Like a fall, that is the highest uh, number of uh, fatality happens in the fall because of fall uh, with a slippery floor or other hole or, 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 or 
or some kind of gaps, you fall uh, that 36% struck by some kind of hitting uh, by the objects, that's a 10%. Uh, when you work in a workshop, uh, in a big uh, industry, uh, so do we have to be, we have to be careful uh, while we also teaching in the TV institution, we should avoid this, uh, how to avoid the falls struck by objective and electrocution is also 9%, also high. So electrocution also the wiring system, the other, we have to check. Uh, yeah, the, uh, as per guideline, uh, what I know is that we have to check our wiring even in our house after uh, 10 years. Uh, and also in a TVA institution, we have to check our old wiring system so because of that, there will be short circuit or fire. So this is very, very important for all the Tibet institution to check the wiring system after 10 years. Then cause in between in the machinery, uh, some kind of uh, in between of the uh, machinery, machines are moving and the students uh, may, get, may get caught in between the machines. So it's a 2%. So that's a very low. So highest is a fall. Fall is very, very, very common. 36% then uh, struck by the objective, 10% and the electrocution 9% and the um, uh, cut in between the machinery or some kind of other uh, other thing, so 2%. So this is uh, data in a construction industry, but however, this is also applicable to the other occupation as well. So now let's talk about the uh, OSS during the pandemic, very known to you, OSS in pandemic condition, very, very well heard from the newspaper, television, uh, uh, many, many, uh, a source of information, a wash hand, uh, that's, uh, you know, all we are washing hand every day when you go out or get toss something, cover, mask and other face seal, avoid touching your nose, mouth and uh, with unwashed hand, clean uh, and disinfect frequently, touch object and surfaces. And the now vaccination, as you know, the globally, uh, now the vaccination is ongoing. Uh, so we have been trying to get uh, uh, vaccinated the, all the citizens of each country. So let's see uh, when this will happen. So this is our uh, OSS in the pandemic condi condition. This is very well known to you. And uh, COVID-19 do's and don't uh, at the workplace, you know, keep minimum 1.5 meter distance. Do not shake hands or no hugs, no hugs and hands. Wash your hands with water and so frequently. Do not touch mouth. No, so I'm not going to read all. You know this uh, very much uh, nicely. So. Uh, now, protective devices uh, for the pandemic like masks, sanitizer, the PPE, the face shield, and you can see the gloves, eye protection, face masks. But the main thing uh, why I'm showing this is the OSS in pandemic needs to be taught in the Tibet. So this we have to teach our students uh, from the Tibet institution. Then only they can they spread this message to all the citizens and their client. So. OSS in pandemic needs to be taught in the Tibet Institute and incorporated in the, this has to be incorporated in the Tibet curriculum, how to uh, manage in the pandemic, how to be safe in the this COVID-19 or other type of uh, pandemic situation or other uh, uh, natural calamity and, uh, and uh, those uh, when you work, how to be safe. Uh, those ha we have to be, we have to taught uh, our to our student in the Tibet Institution. Uh, then uh, also we have to incorporate all this uh, guideline and uh, how to use these protective devices in our curriculum. So, so some uh, international good practice of OSS in Tibet institution, like this is a Polytechnic College of Engineering and Technology, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. So it's a food processing uh, occupation. You can see how the worker are uh, working with the, with the proper uh, cooking clothing and the uh, uh, hair cap, you can see for the safety. So this is, uh, you know, this is Mongolia. Also, uh, it's the auto repair uh, and the welding. You can see the the, the yellow and the, the yellow and the, uh, this uh, uh, black. Uh, so this means you should not cross this. Be careful. So in auto repair, you can see the helmet. You can see this uh, face shield uh, with this signage and the apron. So these are all protective uh, devices. Also safety briefing in Mongolia. So we have to brief our student uh, how to be safe uh, while uh, practicing the skill in the workshop or lab. So maybe in a, a, a six month time, we have to give again, uh, refresher briefing, maybe some new, uh, new guideline will come up, a new regulation from the government side or any occupational 
a new guideline will emerge. So in that case, also we have to brief our student, uh, maybe after six months or uh, depend upon your uh, OSS management plan, like our DG sir uh, has presented, you have to have a OSS management plan. According to the plan, you have to brief all the teachers, all the students, all the staff about the OSS. You can see the uh, safety, uh, rotating machines are there, be careful. Operating procedure, you can see it here. And this uh, yellow and uh, black uh, lines, you can see this fire extinguisher and other, uh, the, 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 the circuit diagram and how to, in, a, in the case of emergency, how to ev evacuate. So those are the things we have to, uh, this is from uh, Malaysia. Uh, so uh, this is this type of uh, signage and the uh, operating procedure uh, we have to put in our TV institution in a proper places. So, so test down center, you can see uh, uh, Tagic City, uh, Metro Manila. Uh, uh, to emphasize safety at the workspace, safety sign, marking and reminder. So this is very important. Safety sign is like hello. Uh, this is uh, the line, first aid, how to perform uh, first, safety first, uh, like a guideline, uh, how, how, how the student can become safety, the sign is, is, you can see the posters of appropriate use of PPE and other uh, safety, uh, safety sign is and, so everywhere you can see the safety first thing, safety first, safety first. So everywhere, there's the uh, women center. You can see this very nicely. Uh, the, the, the floor, you can see the yellow lines. So this is also precaution. Uh, do not cross the yellow lines. The safety sign is you can see. Uh, Thailand also, you can see the safety. Uh, this is fire extinguisher, fire alarm. This is also a safety uh, for the vehicle and on the Paris train also. Uh, so this is in a footpath, you can see the also sign is so that vehicle do not move on the footpath. And the CCTV camera also for the safety and the monitoring purpose and other uh, corridor and everything, you can see it. This is a Songkhala Vocational College, uh, Songkhala, Thailand. Uh, Mara, uh, the Pan Industrial Institute, uh, you can see safety signages. Uh, different uh, signages, uh, color coding, green, uh, red, yellow, and uh, other uh, uh, information here. And the corridor, you can see uh, the lights are there. So in case of an emergency, uh, there is a fire extinguisher also. So so it should be the, the, the when there's a dark corridor, it should be there, there should be light so that uh, when in case of emergency, students can uh, run uh, uh, properly uh, without uh, without uh, hitting the uh, uh, wall or it's with each, each other and you can see also safety signage in works of yellow and uh, yellow and black this stripe uh, so you can also see here in the wall the safety first uh, and the safety guideline so other uh, safety signage you can see in uh, there are different type of in their own language sometimes the safety and signage is also a, a, a subject specific so sometimes it is difficult to understand for the normal people also. So we have to read the manual and we have to uh, get information, then only we know it. So there are many uh, safety and signage We are very subject specific. Like you can see the all stickers are here for the operation of this uh, machine, uh, how to avoid accident and the hazard. The stickers are here. You can see here also uh, everywhere you can see safety and signage, uh, uh, this uh, information. and through the different uh, um, uh, stickers and uh, posters. So requirement also operation, uh, safety first. So you can see the evac evacuation plan, the safety kit, uh, all the, the number of the uh, safety persons. Yeah, you can also see here in the uh, safety lines are here. So this means do not cross this, it's danger. Across this, the machine is operating, so it may harm you. So the evacuation plan, the clear exit, uh, how to, in case of emergency. So these are how we can also do it in our daily education uh, institution uh, for the safety of our student and all the staff and the teacher. Also other safety features, you can see it. So different uh, sign and uh, different, uh, 
posters, stickers with their own language. So also now, uh, this is also very important, the emergency contact in case of emergency like earthquake or, or flood or uh, whom to contact in case of difficulty. So we have to give the telephone number of the uh, OSS department or safety department uh, who, is, who is in uh, charge. So we have to provide the telephone number to all our staff in our TV uh, institution so that uh, in case of emergency, they can call or message to the concerned person. So these are some few uh, international uh, practices for the safety of our student and all the staff. So this uh, we can also, if, you, if we don't have this type of thing in our TV institution, the message is that we have to uh, make it like this so that we are uh, safe on uh, working in our institution. Okay, now I'll, I'll show you some few Tibet curricula with OSH. First, uh, TESDA. Uh, so, you know, the, the Philippines, the Apex Authority in Tibet, uh, uh, Technical Education and Skill Development Authority. So it's an uh, automotive servicing uh, uh, national standard uh, competency standard one. So common, they say common competency and under that there is a code, ALT. So utilize works of facility and equipment. So unit of competence, utilize automotive tool. Element uh, prepared, there are on different element, but I have taken only related to OSS, uh, OSHS. So prepare automotive tool, uh, uh, performance criteria, safety practices are applied following OSHS. So th the students should be briefed uh, before uh, what is uh, occupational safety and health standard. So they, they know it. So that's why in a performance criteria, they have, uh, they have uh, inserted that safety practices are applied following OSHS, required uh, knowledge, safety procedure, and the wearing of PPE. And the second element is use automotive tools and the uh, performance criteria is hand tools are utilized according to operation manual. So operation manual are very, very important. Normally when you, when you also buy some uh, electrical appliance like television uh, washing machine in our home, normally we don't read the operation manual. That's very uh, bad practice because in the operation manual, all the safety uh, things are given in the operation manual. So operation manuals are very, very important and it's very machine is specific. So, and the second is PPR worn in accordance to OSHS. Uh, required knowledge about the, the student must have a knowledge of OSHS and skill they should have is how to wear PPE properly. So there is a right way to wear the PPE and wrong way to wear the PPE. So, uh, we have to teach our student how to wear the PP properly, applying safety practice also. What is the safety signage and all the um, guideline uh, we have to provide to our student. Uh, following the manual, very, very important. We have to follow the uh, operation manual. So this is an example from automation NC1. Also, same uh, automotive servicing NC1, a common competency, again, the same, but the unit of competency utilize workshop facility and equipment element use facility and equipment performance criteria safety practice are applied following so they know the OSHS so they have to follow that required knowledge OSHS and required skill practicing safe, safety following the manual so this is how uh, uh, they, they uh, yeah this is how the, they have managed the OSHS in every case this is also one this is not only automatic servicing NC1 but they have for other each and every course they have a uh, they have this component of uh, OSH uh, in each uh, trading regulation so this is a uh, bangladesh uh, bangladesh technical education board uh, the the occupation is electrical installation and maintenance you can see uh, how they have uh, done uh, very nicely apply OSH practice in the workplace so the 30 hours allocated for that course uh, for this electrical installation installation and maintenance uh, within that course, 30 hours is allocated for OSS. You, you can read the unit descriptor, the unit covers the knowledge and skill attitude required to any apply. So you can read it, so you just uh, you can read it, element of competency, performance criteria. So uh, they are given as uh, the first element is identify and control report OSS hazard. So that's the, the, the student will learn how to identify, how to control and report OSS hazard to the respective person or the department. So immediate work area is routinely checked for OSS hazards. 
prior to commencing and during work. So this is an example of BTED uh, of Bangladesh. So then again, follow emergency response procedure, maintain and improve health and safety in the workplace. So these are all the elements. So and the, the description. Uh, um, so the, in the maintain and improve health and safety in the workplace, so the one uh, description can be risks are identified and appropriate control measures are implemented in the work area. So this is the one of the example of uh, BT uh, ED uh, Bangladesh on electrical installation and maintenance course. This is how they have designed the course for OSH. Okay, another Nepal CTBT uh, Council for Technical Education Vocational uh, Training. So the tele uh, the, the course is telecommunication technician. So and they how they have designed it. You can see it. Module one occupational health and safety. Course description. This module deals with knowledge and skill related to occupational health and safety. Course objective at the end of this course, trainees, trainees will be students will be able to explain the concept of hazard and risk, apply first aid and personal protective equipment. So that's the objective. And the tax you can see uh, theory. So total 15 hours allocated within that uh, uh, telecommunication technician uh, course, 15 hours, five hours per theory and 10 hours per practical. And the tasks are listed like identify hazard and risk. So what is hazard, what is risk? Uh, so hazard and risk, uh, uh, theory three hour, practical three hour, apply first aid skill. So first aid, how to apply it. Uh, so one hour per theory, three hour for practical, use PPE, personal protective equipment. So you can see it, uh, theory one hour and the practical four hours. So they have uh, designed in this way, the curriculum. Also Nepal, CTBT, electrical and electronics engineering, occupational safety and health. Okay, there is a code also, two hours per week, year one, semester two, uh, you can see it. What is the, the course description? The course deals with the possible basic damages and safety precaution while working with the electrical equipment and circuit. Course objective, you can see it. Course content, unit one, use of, uh, safe use of electrical components. So six hour is allocated for how to use safely the electrical component. Safe use of the, and the, and the, the, the detail are safe use, safe use of electrical tools, static charge in high voltage equipment, electrical installation technique and safety tools. So these are the course, uh, uh, is being uh, uh, delivered by CTVT Nepal in the electrical and electronics engineering course. Same electrical shock, how to avoid, you can read it, 10 hours. Equipment or things, six hour. Unit four, fire hazard and the fire fighting techniques, so eight hours. So you can see it, how they have uh, detailed the uh, course like this. Okay. These are the uh, so there, there is one question in the chat box. So how it looks like the, the curriculum. So also what I like to give you input is that uh, to develop is a first, this is a first, the guideline is that it is subject specific, the mechanical construction, electrical. The, some are common, but some may differ as, as per the uh, tools, equipment and the machinery, thus it, it, it can be subject spe specific in some, part, but in the major part, like the recognition of the safety, how to avoid the hazard, uh, 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 electrical uh, thing, those things can be common, but some, some, uh, some unit can be different. It, it will be uh, uh, subject specific. So for the ICT and the digital lab, uh, it can be a little different, uh, but some uh, units uh, can be common. So uh, let me show you one course. Okay, uh, I hope uh, you see this one of the example course. So construction related, uh, construction related occupational safety and health. This is, this is a course for the construction worker, uh, the people involved in the construction side. Uh, so, so 
So it's a hundred uh, forty page long, but it, it is uh, developed under the Future Mover program, which is being implemented in the Philippines or the Morao region, and it is developed by the German Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, recently, it's under uh, development still, but let me show you the main content only. Uh, laws there are uh, different laws in Philippines for the construction uh, occupation, so uh, we have to uh, teach this to our student. What are the laws? What 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 is our obligation? How can we follow the law? So so first uh, we have to introduce them the different laws regulation of Philippines government. Then model one personal protective equipment introduction. What is PPE? How to wear those thing? Model one. Uh, then model two respiratory respiratory protection. How we can uh, uh, save our uh, respiratory uh, things in lungs, uh, pulmonary things. So you can see respiratory system, respiratory hazard, resp respiratory protection, points to consider. Then model three, eye and face, how, to, how we can protect our eye and face. So eye and face hazard, type of accident that cause blindness, potential hazard, protective measure. Model four, uh, protection uh, for hands, arms and feet and legs. So this is how you can develop a course in a, in a subject specific, like for the construction, uh, for the construction, for the mechanical, electrical, electronic, ICT, so uh, health. So this is a uh, very from each other uh, hospitality, cooking and uh, baking course or other uh, other any uh, course. So you can make it subject specific. You have to. I already told you the few few units are the are common, but uh, few are very very subject specific. It's uh, differ from machine to machine. So. So this is one example. Now let me go to again to my slide. Okay, so you saw the course, you saw the uh, curriculum and you saw the separate course uh, for construction worker and the other people in the construction. Now, now let me uh, way forward for the institution. Initiate development of the national policies. Uh, already, uh, this is all discussed by the DG sir. The initiate development of national policies in infrastructure, technology, and partnership, improving the health of so it's very important. Industry partnership, other uh, other um, uh, social organization, or organi chamber of commerce, the so partnership is important. Uh, so provide training in OS. Uh, provide training in OS should also be given in connection with vocational training. It's, it should not separate, uh, we should not also separate the technical training also. So it's a, a connection with the vocational training we have to provide and design and conduct training program for all staff, including the students. So it's very important. All staff, and they must be trained. They must know the uh, safety rules and regulation. Make, uh, uh, make OS as organizational culture so that all staff are concerned. And it should be uh, made uh, organizational culture. So. Whenever we see some kind of hazard or risk or mistake, we have to immediately we have to we have to inform our department or the concerned person. So the, we have to make it as a culture for the student. Also, we have to make aware them and bring them into organizational culture. Have adequate resource to sustain successful program to achieve this. So issues are very important for the safety as well as for the uh, uh, practicing skill and other thing. Uh, resource is very important. Motivate all staff in updating latest and updated. So we have to also update our staff on latest and updated information OSS. Maybe we have been using the OSS uh, curriculum, which is developed uh, 25 years ago, 50 years ago. So that's very dangerous. Uh, so we have to update our curricula and all the guidelines uh, as per the 21st century standard. Have a maintenance and repair plan. This is very important. Uh, uh, should, should have maintenance and repair plan and always follow the plan. And this is only having a, a plan is not important. You have to follow that timely. Make sure that OSS is integrated in the Tibet curricula. So you have to integrate it into Tibet curricula. 
as a separate course or you can integrate with the technical course. The both way is okay. Uh, but main thing is you have to inform about OSS to the uh, TVET uh, students. Monitor uh, is very important that the, it's the, the OSS sessions should be monitored by the specialized person who knows about the OSS so that they, uh, he or she can monitor it and inform the correctness or if there's any uh, mistake or some kind of a problem, they have to correct it. Train all staff on using the safety and this is also very important. There are safety equipment, but many of us who don't know how to use staff on using the safety and emergency devices and procedure, the evacuation procedure in the earthquake, what we used to do in a flood, in other uh, natural calamities. So in that case, what we do, we have to train all our staff. And in the conclusion, uh, the Tibet institution, uh, the first uh, safety first, as you know, we have to put this signage everywhere. Uh, maybe this can be done first step for the Tibet institute can be, you, have, you can put this signage, uh, starts putting this signage uh, where appropriate. So Tibet institute, there's competency-based curricula and OSS occupational safety and health standard. So safe and uh, so that makes our learning safe and pleasant, a learning environment where our student uh, gain the competencies of certain occupation. So after that, we have to develop session design, manage resources, as you know, conduct vocational training with integration of OSS, monitor the program and improve the program. So this is almost PDCA cycle. We have to apply for the OSS management as well. Then what we get there as output is a student with technical and the OSS competencies. So that's our objective. Our student uh, not only equipped with the technical competency, but they also equipped with the occupational safety and health competencies as well, so that when they go to the work, they can work very professionally, safely, and also prevent the accident to others for the citizen as well. Uh, so this is uh, the, the concluding uh, part of my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Engineer Sanyo. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, yeah. dear distinguished participants. Uh, now floor is open for question and answer session. So if you have any concern, any question, you may ask right now. I have noticed some of the questions all uh, you already raised uh, before the presentation of the engineer Sanyo. He already responded. So if you still have questions, you may write to our uh, chat box. Uh, Dr. Ram and Engineer Sanyog will respond. Like uh, the first question, what are the occupational safety and health challenges in industry 4.0 and how can we overcome? From Dr. Arul. So, uh, Arul maybe Kamraj from Chennai. Chennai, yes. And he mentioned my question to Ram. Okay, thank you, Kamraj, sir. Uh, I think uh, occupational and occupational health and safety related, uh, you know, challenges in industry 4.0 means, uh, as we discussed, the uh, safety, occupational health and safety related challenges are different based on occupation. Like uh, for electrical, different set of challenges for mechanical, different. Like you mentioned, IR40. IR40 is mostly artificial intelligence and digital technology and, you know, the more ICT and um, Internet of Things. So for the like robotics, you know, for that, I think basically uh, that is related, more related with the, uh, you know, uh, what, what we call like. Um, this uh, ultraviolet thing, some uh, electrical, maybe some electrical and mo mostly it can damage with the, uh, for the brain and head, something like that. That's why uh, actually we are not the expert. I have to say, frankly, we are not the expert for all occupations. Uh, like professionally, uh, my background is, uh, my background, um, I, 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 my if you see my education, it is a cocktail, you know. Like I studied first MBA. After that, I did my um, uh, bachelor in hotel management with the uh, Australian qualification from Australia. Then I did my PhD, MPhil, and PhD in education leadership. 
and Tibet. That's why we cannot answer all these sectors like uh, IR40, mechanical engineering. So we have to consult with the uh, re uh, real professionals like who are work working with the IR40 means IR40 is the mostly technology with artificial intelligence, robotic and digital techniques. And because of that technology, what might be the health related hazards and occup occupational related health and safety things. So we have to analyze properly occupational, occupation related health and safety hazards and uh, potential accident. We have to analyze deeply and based on that, we have to develop our measures. That, that answer I can give right now. But if I give the, this is the proper way to handle AI, artificial intelligence for things, that will be the wrong answer. I should be honest on it. Thank you very much. And for that, I think if, if Ghaniji can give some answer, you can, because he is uh, he's from the ICT background. Aniji, you, you can add something, but that, that is my professional answer to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ram. Uh, you responded in very correctly. You know, with regard to Industrial Revolution 4.0, there are both positive and negative, you know, risk uh, uh, related to the health and safety. So these positive and negative risks we have to see with regard to the technology. So industrial revolution four is totally depends on different technology. That's a combination of number of technologies and it, each technology has own uh, risk uh, uh, related to the health and safety. So, so I, I agree with Dr. Ram. So we have to see uh, the specific technology and with regard to a specific technology, we have to identify the uh, uh, like number of uh, occupational health and safety risk uh, for that technology. So thank you very much, Dr. Ram. So maybe, maybe any other questions? And there is a one question like, what is the difference between safety and security? Safety first or security first? I think uh, this safety and security, I think these are like, uh, you know, what is called, um, uh, they are, they are, they always comes together. And uh, safety and security. Security means uh, we, we normally the term security would, uh, related with the environment, like overall overall working environment, um, uh, things like a security, how we are providing, how we are creating safety environment. And that, that how part will be answered by the security things, like uh, is that secure environment? And safety always comes, is that safe to work? If we talk about um, you know work environment and is that safe to work? So safety and security always come together, like monitoring and evaluations, and they are they supplement each other. You know, so don't be confused with that word. So we have to create safe work environment, and for that we have to provide security. That's the thing. Oh, all right. Well, Yes, One yes. of the participants asked, uh, "What is bullying? Yeah. Uh, bullying oh. is uh, in, uh, bullying in the Tibet institution. Uh, I think we also did it in the when we were in the school and in the college. We also bullying each other, so teasing each other, playing in the workshop. So the, that what is mean is when you play, when you tease each other, when you when you push your friend, he, it may cause a damage or it may harm you. So that is called bullying, teasing each other." All right. One of the questions from participants: Do we do we have a, a online training program on health and safety? So right now we do not have any uh, program in our portal in our system. So if we re receive request from one of our member state participants, definitely we are going to organize such kind of training program for you. Yeah, and another thing is like online OHS and OHS related training. There are many many. Not only not rely only with CPSC. You can find many other areas. Like if you go to the WHO website, there are many uh, occupational health and safety related training program. ILO, ITC, ILO, Turin, in Italy, they have also online program, but they charge high. You know, they are not generous like CPSC. CPSC is always doing free. 
But if you have to enroll ITC ILO program, you have to pay. Only they will provide some scholarship, but uh, we have to pay. So there is a OHS related training by ITC ILO and some you can find in some in WHO, you know, many, many areas you can find. But if you spend time with the computer and internet, I think you can find it. And there is a one question like, uh, uh, like uh, how many Tibet, how many model for OHS? I think it depends upon your country and it depends upon the context. Like we showed, uh, engineer Sanyog showed some uh, curriculum, uh, you know, sample of curriculum. Like recently uh, the, in Philippines, we, we developed uh, for the future mover project in Marawi uh, in the uh, Mindanao region, Mindanao area. Uh, like it is a more detailed uh, curriculum. Uh, related to um, occupational health and safety. But if we go to other other courses, it depends upon the country's requirement and how 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 many weightages are they providing. So uh, the how many models, it depends upon the decision of the Tibet authority of the country. And the depend upon the exports. Sometimes like sector, sector skills council, when during the curriculum development, uh, the sector skills council from the industry people so how, what sort of weightage they want, based on that, the curriculum developer will do that. That's why we cannot give ready-made answers. So there should be two module, three module, one module, four module. It depends. Like somebody, like there are a five, uh, five safety area. We mentioned size, five uh, areas for hazard, potential hazards. Means you can develop five module, one for safety, one for like we mentioned already, you know, uh, sort of things five areas, or if you consider ear, nose, and breathe, you know, we can consider three models like that. It depends. That's why the export and industry people decide how many modules will be applied in that country and in that occupations. And it depends where we are. Like, you know, some OHS competencies for Singapore and OHS competencies for rural Nepal will be different. OHS competencies in Bhutan's uh, Technical Institute and OHS competencies for Malaysian Polytechnic might be different because we are in the different geographical situation. We are applying different technologies and we are, we are in the different uh, you know, geographical conditions. So it depends. All right, so thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, we do not have any more questions. So like uh, another question from Nime, can I get engineer Sanyo curriculum model soft copy? Definitely all the material is available on our CPSC on post platform. I hope you already register over there. If you register, you can access the copy from there. So everything is uh, available over there, all the material rel related to the webinar. So thank you very much, uh, dear participants. Uh, we hope that you have enjoyed the session, you have learned. Uh, number of the skills and competent uh, knowledge that will helpful for you. So may I request uh, Dr. Ramans again to conclude the session. Uh, thank you, Ghaniji. Uh, thank you for your well facilitation and you did a good job. Once again, I would like to thank Engineer Sanyuk for the uh, practical presentations uh, related to occupational health and safety related issues, especially there's some examples like how to use signs and symbol within our Tibet institutions. He gave very good example from different country. And similarly, he presented some curriculum model. So how, how Tibet systems is incorporating uh, OHS competencies within the curricula, that is, that is very important part. So we can go back to our institute or we can go back to our Tibet systems and we can analyze our curriculum. Are we integrating uh, competencies related to OHS in our curriculum adequately or not? Is it in line with the national OHS laws, occupational health and safety laws or not? That is very important. And in the broader perspective, in a global perspective, there is a, there is a OHS standard developed by ILO also, but the decent work environment. We can take sample from that also because 
today we are not producing our workforce only for our country for the domestic purpose we are producing competent workforce for the global market that's why we can fit our curricula for the globally competitive competencies in that case we can take the framework of the developed by ilo so uh, with these words once again i would like to thanks all the distinguished participants from the different cpsc member countries and around the globe um, for your valuable time for your support and for your learning you know and sharing uh, different very valuable questions so i would like to thank the persons who asked questions to us and this is a very important uh, things uh, during the, uh, the interactive webinar and um, thank you for your time thank you for your uh, support and um, uh, hope we able to give some ideas and knowledge to you and we we got some some of some ideas from your questions and queries also with these words i would like to thanks all the um, uh, tibet professionals around the globe and my team from cpsc for front of house and back of house means who are supporting from the ict and uh, from the training divisions like all the cpsc staffs are uh, doing very good job wonderful job thank you very much and as you requested we'll provide uh, all the presentations and the sample of the construction curricula which sanyog showed uh, the recently developed for the future mover things we can upload in our portal from the cpsc learning management portal you can download it and you can visit the cpsc website there are many manuals not only occupational health and safety like greening tibet industry institute linkage and many many uh, teachers manual and other publications also so please use to visit cpsc website and uh, get some uh, documents knowledge and we are always uh, open to share and our knowledge and expertise uh, from our website and like uh, from individually when we meet and due to covid we are not uh, able to meet face to face but virtually we are meeting by heart so by heart and mind once again thanks for your valuable time thank you salamat po namaste namaskar thank you sir thank you very much All right, dear participants. Uh, the pro program is concluded. So thank you very much. Uh, we are expecting to be you part of our next webinar program. It will be soon at the end of this one. So please do register over there. So thank you. Goodbye. Salamat. Namaste. Salamat. Thank you very much. Salamu alaikum. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, and thanks, host. Uh, Thank you, Sanjay, Sanjay sir. Have a good day, everyone. Hello, hello, Jarul Islam sir. Yes, sir. Namaste, sir. Namaste, namaste, sir. Thank sorry, you, sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you for I, valuable I presentation. The thank, you, thank you, from ID, yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. 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 Thank you very much. Good uh, presenter. Always yeah. presented with me the uh, uh, any of uh, all our programs. Please, uh, please, uh, please, uh, please convey our heartfelt condolences to your family and IDB team. Okay, sir. I'm sorry for that. Yes, yesterday I, I was there uh, uh, then talking with Shakti Rabat and also about uh, this person. Okay, thank you. I will convey with your message. Okay, thank you, sir. Take care. Be safe, thank everybody. That time we are also. Uh, thank you for well your well presentation, sir. Thank you. So thank you, sir. It's a thank good presentation in in that thank moment. Is the uh, wash and also the safety Hello, for the, myself <laughs> and also Hello. yourself. Everybody uh, needs. Hello, uh, Martin Chi, Martin sir. Hello, yeah, sir. Martin How are sir. you? Hello, sir. How are you? Take care. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you, everybody. Okay, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Uh, Assalamualaikum. This is uh, this was a very informative session for uh, all of us.
and uh, we are thankful to all the uh, thank you sir Hello. thank you sir thank you very much Hello. Shabai ke dhunnabad. Thanks everybody for presenting a beautiful presentation over in Osh. So in future, the presentation is very enjoyable. Thank you. Online attendance. Assalamu alaikum. I'm from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum from Pakistan. Thank you, sir. Oh, let go. Masjid se bas na malikum. Malikum salam. Tasim Allah sir. Ma tu lejan sir shay. الحمدللہ <laughs> 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 موسیقی موسیقی माने समस्या लो थके ही नहीं माजूम तो एकदम पाव बना वो जी तो लाताने नौ नौ बंद आप लोग इतने नौ नौ पकड़े माना ये नीचे नीचे ठीक है सर डॉक्टर सेफ सामाले को बतार खान सिंह लेसिंग सिंह लेसिंग है जी क्या है जी जी डियर खस्ता लगा उम्मा पकड़ी कि आस पिस्टन द क्लू पका पत्� یو شی میں بلے اٹکڑو پا کہ مائی چیارا مونگا پا سی بی ٹی کورسز کے اوسو دا مادول پا شکل کے دا سیفٹی ہیلت اکوپیشنل ہیلت این سیفٹی دا یو مادول سٹارٹ کی مائی چیارا تا سی وسلم شیئر کے چیارا اس پا سی بی ٹی کیوں مونگ دا تا دا نور ملکون آگی دا گاو کو کنا دا دا با شیئر کو خیر دے وسلم دا با سر شیئر کو ماغی سر وقت ماغی تو ہم لکھل چیرہ وقت پا پاکستان کی مونگ چکم سی بیٹی پروگرام راکو ایپلیمنٹیشن ہو شنو آگی کہ دا دی یو مادول ستا کپیشنل سیفٹی نا 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 خو دا ماشاءاللہ دا کورسشن اگر یا دا 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 خو پخپلا باندے دا 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 او دا خوی دا 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 قنا بیارا چیٹ پاکس ندی اخلی ہوں کنا دا دا خوی دا خوی دا خوی دا خوی جی جی آقا با خوی چطی دا غیرا زا اصل کی دا آقا شتا پاسی سری مو پیٹی کم مو آقا 
wala kayo training inshallah months ke kini shirashi pa ke ba ba finalize no zara sare ghair hazir pati che ma hazir ghair hazir ma koi shi जी <laughs> 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 मुंदले खबरिया <laughs> 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 याद न कर 
بنگلہ 